your husband invited the young Dr. King mm -hmm. into the Montgomery bus boycott after Rosa Parks refused to give up the right. seat. That's right. That's right. Tell me and about that. Do you remember the? Oh, sure. When, um, well, you know, the Women's Political Council, they never say anything about them, had made arrangements with the bus company so that there could be select seating for blacks. We were called Negroes then <laughs> in a certain section of the bus, especially on routes that were going in the black, into the black neighborhood. And Rosa had, they had allotted those seats, the seat across the back and two seats coming forward on the right and left side of the bus. And Rosa was seated in one of the seats that had been assigned to Negroes on any bus. So the driver stopped and asked her to move, and she refused to move because she knew she was within her rights. And then he called the police and had her arrested because she was violating what they called a law. And that isn't true. It was just an arrangement that they had made. And of course, Rosa was seated where she was supposed to be. And the bus driver asked for her seat and she refused to give it up. So they called and arrested her, called the police and arrested her. But before Rosa, there had been two other young people who had done similar things. And um, Claudette Colvin and Mary Fair, Mary, I can't think of her last name. Mary Fair Birch. Mary Fair Birch was with the Women's Political Council. She and Rosa uh, worked Mary together. Louise Mary Louise Smith, that's right. Uh, but she was both, they were both 16, so, and not really well known in the community, so nobody decided to protest in response to their arrest. But Rosa, having been secretary for the NAACP, then Mr. Nixon called her up and said, well, now they've arrested Rose. It's time for us to do something. So he said, well, maybe we need to boycott the buses. But my husband had, as president of the, of the student body at Alabama State, had, bu had boycotted the dining hall. And the student body boycotted the dining hall and got better food and two people were fired. So he had been accustomed to a boycott when Rosa refused to give up her seat. It was nothing new for him. And um, he said, well, it's time for us to do something, Mr. Nixon. So that Sunday, they went to the pulpits, very various pastors went to their pulpits and said they were going to boycott the buses for one day. And that one day, after everything, the buses rolled empty. The one that the stop came to at the end of my street and the stop that came near the end of, of um, Martin and, and the street where Martin and Coretta lived. So the, the buses were empty. And after that, we decided, well, you know, it's time for us to really keep this going. And that one day turned into 381 days. The churches bought station wagons, and residents picked up, drove their cars to various stops where people would have been picked up, dropped them off nearly where the bus would have carried them had they been riding the bus.